As a classic Total War fan, I am definitely an enjoyer of human factions. Bretonia and the Empire were sort of my go-tos in Game 1 and 2. Now, in Game 3, we've got two new human factions, and they definitely have a very interesting matchup against each other. Uh, pretty good tools both in this matchup. Uh, I'm coming in myself. I think this is versus Turin. I don't 100% remember. Unfortunately, the replays don't show the names anymore, and I've fought so many battles recently that I'm having a hard time remembering actually you know who was what battle but anyway we've got coastal team here we've got little grom along with some armored cossars uh some cossars here uh just regular cossars to take the high ground and yeah little grom on opening lots of cavalry and the war sleds in reserve we'll see more of them in just a minute but i mean obviously just thinking about this matchup one clear advantage that uh, Kislev has over Cathay is their mobility, right? Excellent cavalry chariots, whereas Cathay lacks that substantially. While Cathay has a little bit more of a traditional kind of skirmisher infantry dichotomy with definitely a better monster. There's no question in my mind the Terracotta is just superior in every way to the, the uh, elemental bear. A bear being way too expensive and the Terracotta arguably being a little bit undercosted. Maybe it should be like 1800. I don't think it should be up to 2,000 like a lot of other people do. But anyway, we've got some Jade Warrior Halberds coming in here. Uh, the Cathayan Halberds are definitely going to be very solid in this matchup. I think you'll want to go as many as possible. Turin here, though, just opening with Meow, plus the one Sentinel, and yeah, two Sword Jade Warriors, Jade Crossbowmen, and the Peasant Long Spears. So uh, this is the, what is it, Broken Leg Goalie map, I believe? Uh, World Warhammer 1 map. Honestly, one of the first battles that really inspired me to to start my channel was a battle I had against uh, an old Warhammer 1 and 2 player, Pharaoh War. Hope if you're out there, buddy, you're doing well. Uh, my friend from Egypt. Yeah, we had an excellent scrap. I believe it was like the Beastmen versus Greenskins. But anyway, just moving up to secure the center objective. We've got out already one of my personal favorite unit on Kislev's roster. Unit I was most excited for, and they do actually turn out to be quite strong, which is the Light War Sleds. They're literally just war wagons if they were awesome. Uh, they are AP chariots with anti-infantry, great weapon strength. And then each of these little Streltsy in the back has this shooting attack, which is close to something like a handgun and shooting attack. Maybe a little bit more damage, but anyway. Meow moving up in the center, gonna drop this nice uh, Dragon's Talon Vortex. I'm still learning the names, guys, <laughs> so I apologize. Uh, that that's, doesn't sound right to me, though. Uh, yeah, Talon's of the Knight, close enough. Uh, <laughs> and the Armored Kossar is gonna get into combat. Kossaltine here just kind of punching around, sort of uh, disrupting, getting a nice little rear charge here. The armor piercing damage on the bear character is definitely very legit, so they can be used to give some anti-infantry support, as can the bear sleds coming in here, getting a nice downhill charge, just running from the Sentinel. That is the biggest weakness, obviously, of the Sentinel is the slow speed. And against somebody like Kislev, who can definitely take advantage with mobility, we've got some Griffin Legion coming in, the upper tier shock cavalry, 100 armor, 72 charge bonus, 40 weapon strength, 12 armor piercing, pretty good stuff. Armored Kossars are pushing forward. Cathay is also somewhat slow. If we can, if I can push forward and kind of keep Turin up by his deployment zone and not allow him to even get to the point, it should work out pretty well in my favor. We've got the Kossars now secured location number one. We've got a pretty commanding presence on location number two. We've been able to clear out most of the Cathayan infantry. Peasant Longspears are continuing to hold. This is not really a great engagement for my... Uh, Griffin Legion. We're just going to try and force path them past this Peasant Spears. I was really hoping those Peasant Spears would uh, route, but they are holding at least for the time being. And with Miao Ying and the, uh, the uh, Sentinel now fighting in that center location, it's going to be tough. But the Bear Sleds, the key for me is just, again, to keep disruption going. We're going to be doing some nice anti-infantry damage and some shooting attacks, but just to keep those missile units disrupted as much as possible, not allow them to get set and get that harmony. Good create enough of a presence to push the point effectively. Little Grom also just raining fire from a distance. I think I'm actually targeting, yeah, I'm targeting on this blob of, of stuff right here, trying to get those cavalry. Jade Lancers coming in. Griffin Legion versus Jade Lancers. Just want you guys to see so you can understand the size difference in these cavalry, them fighting side by side. I mean, the horses, the Kislev horses are definitely bigger, but the men, the Kislev bros, they are just huge in comparison <laughs> like 
these these little Cathayan dudes are tiny, I'm telling you. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, more bear sleds coming in. Just to continue to uh, provide that uh, anti-infantry damage. The armored Cossars are holding out quite well. Kislev's passive ability, this uh, by our blood here, which gives them a one-time use unbreakable. When they the first time they start wavering, they'll briefly become unbreakable, which is exceptionally strong in this game mode. Uh, the fact that your infantry will just continue to hold on the point and keep that capture power up in a situation when they otherwise would have routed already is extremely strong. You can see the sleds just running around doing some awesome disruption and uh, continuing to just be an absolute nuisance. Even the Jade Lancers like coming after the sleds because the sleds have pretty good uh, animations. They do the shooting attack while they're in melee as well. Uh, the uh, Jade Lancers really aren't going to be able to do a lot here, <laughs> even against that uh, chariot. Got brought in uh, Snow Leopard here, a little cheap ar armor piercing, anti large, single entity, pretty low weapon strength, but with the melee attack buff up to 87 weapon strength. Costaltine's buffs are ridiculously strong. Uh, he is definitely going to be going to be the meta choice for most matchups in multiplayer. I do think uh, like Boris and some of the other lords, uh, uh, Katarine maybe more situationally even, but I do think perhaps there's uses even for them. But just I mean these prayer buffs for uh, Kislev are super strong. Arguably, you know you don't have the AOE damage of the Sigmarite prayer buffs, and they do have a tighter area of effect. But I mean you have a hundred percent vigor refresh and a heal. Only three-time use, of course, but still. That charge bonus buff, also great synergy with Kislev. Uh, Miao Ying going to hit the transform. Fought back into dragon form so she can uh, fight this fight a little bit better. We've got the Kossar still holding the hill. Turin does sneak some peasant horsemen up onto my home objective, objective number one. Uh, so I will have to respond to that in a moment. But for the time being, I'm busy microing. I've developed one more war sled here. So we're up to three war sleds on the field. One is... Uh, the original war sled, the one I brought on first, is almost gone. But uh, they've been able to just keep the Cathayans bottled up in this in this pass here and not allow them to, uh, you know, come in and even provide any kind of support on the point where you can see there's no infantry left. There's just the monsters. And granted, this monster's presence is pretty heavy. It's somewhat hard to kill the Sentinels. Miao Ying is taking quite a bit of damage from Little Grom and from, uh, and from Costaltine. Nice hit on the Sentinel there. But what? The Snow Leopard doesn't cause terror? I thought for sure the Snow Leopard caused terror. Eh, I guess we all learned something new right there. I it is very cheap. It's only 650 so... <laughs> anyway, I've also brought in a Frost Maiden on a horse. I've been experimenting a little bit with Kislev. Uh, just letting the Winds of Magic build for a while and then bringing your caster on reserve. Um, so that, you know, they can come in relatively cheap and fast and just drop a couple of big spells right away. Uh, it actually might be viable with some other factions too, I don't know, but Costantine is getting quite low at this point. He does have some survivability buffs that make him quite hard to kill. When he gets below 25% HP, he gets an extra deal, extra 5 melee defense, 12 leadership, and uh, healing as well, 0.4% heals per second below 25% HP. So kind of like Cloak of Isha, for those of you guys who played Warhammer 1 and 2, familiar with uh, Orion. Not quite as strong, maybe, as Cloak of Isha, but... Ooh, nice little hit on the shoulder of the giant right there. Little Grom's last shot as uh, the red sled single entity with the big gun moves in. Very slow, but still. We've also got these Kossars, again, just kind of holding capture power for the time being. No need to really commit them too hard to an engagement. Uh, we also got some light cavalry coming in. Light and heavy cavalry. Winged Lancers. I mean... <laughs> the size difference is even more pronounced, I feel, in this engagement with these peasant horsemen just getting absolutely butchered by those winged hussars. The lancers coming in, and of course the supporting fire of the horse archers as well. They should be able to move up and easily resecure this point. It was a good little sneaky get for turn to try and get back on uh, tickets here, though. And also, because he is far enough behind, he's getting a little bit of uh, kind of catch up mechanic, right, for extra supply. So he should be able to develop some more units in here. I did YOLO my Frost Maiden in to some Peasant Spears, which is definitely a mistake. And the sleds are almost gone. Um, yeah, the sleds have definitely done what they needed to, which was to keep this area occupied, like I said. But you can see the, the sort of the corpses of the sleds uh, scattered all around this area. Eventually, the Halberds did come through and clear them out. And we've got more Halberds on the high ground that can come down here. More Jade Warriors and uh, Peasants rallied to the cause, regained their leadership, trying to get back on that center objective. Brought in even more cavalry, some more uh, 
Kosovites here. Some dervishes gonna get in, and again, just make sure that we can keep this area secure from Cathayan cavalry. Definitely Kislev cavalry is far superior, which they should be. I mean, Kislev is probably gonna be number two only to Bretonia, but definitely better a, ca a better cavalry sieve than Empire. Um, I mean, as much as it pains me to say, Bear Riders are better than Demigriff Knights, and I, I don't know, I, I think better is maybe not the right term. Empire Cavalry are definitely tankier, as we see Costaltine finishes off Meow Ying here, and the uh, both the Sentinels are go have gone down as well, so pretty commanding position at this point for me. Turin is bringing in some more Halberds and Spears, Iron Hail Gunners as well, he's been using to okay effect, as long as they haven't been disrupted by the, the sleds. But uh, Kostaltine just continuing to tank it out anyway. Yeah, Kislev, uh, their, the Shock Cavalry is faster than Empire. It is a little bit squishier, but faster and with better charge bonus. So it's interesting, kind of a little bit of a trade-off there. You also don't have quite as much variety, at least for the time being, uh, with no Knights of the Blazing Sun. But it should be noted that Kostaltine does also give AoE fire damage and melee attack when he is in melee which is really nice against any faction that can take uh, healing. Definitely Cathay is in that boat. A healing of the uh, the Sentinels is something that Meow Yung was probably doing, and I was probably getting some uh, healing reduction from that fire damage, which is nice. Didn't even really think about that too much during the battle, to be honest, but it is something it is worth pointing out. And a little bit of weird, like, glowing action on the uh, unit banners there. I'm not really sure what's causing that, but anyway... Cost fights fighting in the center here. Armored Cossars. More Cathayan cavalry getting in. The Iron Hail Gunners as well. They're doing all right. They have pretty short range. They can definitely dish out some pain up close, but the short range is a liability in quite a few situations. Um, cavalry continuing to contest up here. Jade Lancers come through. And one thing to note about the Kislev Horse Archers, they have very solid sustained melee stats. Um, you know, 22... 26-22 uh, on attack and defense. Like, if you look at the Cathayan Cavalry without Harmony, their attack and defense stats are pretty close. I mean, obviously, the Jade Lancers have much better armor. But just to finish things off, Turin was making a pretty strong push here in the center. He does technically have this uh, top ground. No, he's not quite got a cap yet. He might be able to get a cap, though, bringing in some more Jade Lancers. So just as the final nail in the coffin, we're going to bring in three winged hussars and just get this glorious mass charge here onto the center objective. The winged hussars arrive, push back the Cathayan infantry. Just continuing to overrun into the lines of the Dragon Emperor, showing him that the way of the frost is the true way. I don't know. <laughs> Fun stuff, though, for sure. Yeah, it looks like the Jade Lancers, Peasant Long Spears are pretty much finished off and shattered there. And been able to just hold this center objective with the Winged Lancers. Yeah, definitely, I think Kislev having a mobility advantage does give them, in my opinion, a slight advantage here. Likewise, the, the Bear Sleds being so good, like armor-piercing, anti-infantry disruption, sort of everything that it is the bane of Cathay at the moment... I don't know, I would be curious to play against like a, a heavy air force build with a lot of longmas, but at the same time I think the longmas would just get torn apart by all the armor piercing and, and sort of cost effective screening of Kislev, like longmas getting charged on the ground by Jade, uh, by uh, winged lancers and um, it, just everything, I don't know. Definitely need some more matches to see how I really feel about the matchup, but early impressions are that Kislev has some pretty good tools in this matchup. Um, bear sleds are awesome. The light war sleds are, in my opinion, like the strongest unit for multiplayer on Kislev's roster. They're just so cost effective in a multitude of situations and good in pretty much every matchup in game three. Um, and even thinking about game two factions, uh, I guess ogres, maybe not. I'm not really allowed to show and talk about them too much. So let's move on. But any <laughs> all the matchups that I will be showing this week, let's say. In Kislev week, Light War Sleds will prevail, and they all do a good job of paying for themselves here. Um, yeah, the uh, the first one I brought out in particular, 1600 value, just so awesome. The Griffin Legion don't quite pay for themselves. I kind of misused them a little bit. Same thing with the Frost Maiden, but they did just fine here. Winged Lancers, fairly cost-effective. I mean, again, I didn't need to do too much with them. Just kind of push back and hold some objectives. 
The uh, Snow Leopard also, if you get it into the right engagements, it is pretty squishy, so be careful with it. But if you get it into the right engagements, it can be quite good, very cost effective. Horse Archers also, I mean, they didn't end up doing too much in terms of damage value, but they are here. The uh, Mobility Skirmish Disruption, again, pretty good against Cathay, just to keep them on the back foot. Costaltine is definitely very strong in multiplayer. I do think he's going to be the go-to pick in most matchups. Little Grom also manages to pay for itself uh, in melee a little bit there after using up all of its ammunition. Armored Kossar is just nice for kind of holding the line. Uh, uh, Cathay doesn't have really great armor-piercing anti-infantry, so armored infantry in general is pretty decent against them. Armored Kossar is fairly cost-effective mid-tier armored shielded infantry so pretty good stuff there and then of course the regular cost stars can be very cost effective also shooting at anything with light armor uh for turn here uh yeah meow ying just carrying insane value as is usual the terracotta sentinel see this is the thing why a lot of people are saying this thing's wildly overpowered like i think it's honestly kind of fine it can survive for quite some time and still not do enough damage to pay for itself just because the animations are pretty slow and it's somewhat un unresponsive, like, in getting it to turn and fight, like, to just even just, like, you know, rotate to the side and fight a, a unit right next to it will take some time. So, uh, they are a little bit risky. And I think against Kislev, Kislev has enough armor-piercing missiles that it's not maybe arguably one of the few matchups where the Sentinel is not super viable. I don't know. Again, I need to play around with it a little bit more and see. But definitely, I think, from Cathay's perspective, you just want to spam Halberds. And this may also be a situation where you'd want to take Zhao legitimately just for Final Chance Mutation. I guess you could also just take a Metal Caster with Final Chance Mutation only alongside Miao Ying. But uh, anyway... Yeah, the Jade Lancers come in. They do an admirable job considering they are definitely up against a superior class of cavalry. Uh, the Jade Halberds, again, quite good here. I think, yeah, maybe just going with the more of a Jade Halberd build. Peasant Longspear is also probably decently cost-effective in this matchup as well. Just a lot of anti-large, almost like you're going to play against Bretonia, I think. That's how you would want to approach this for Cathay. Like, Bretonia with armor-piercing chariots, basically, is the way to look at it from Cathay's perspective. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thank you once again for watching. We'll see you next time.